Okay, so hi everybody. Um, my name is Jordan Henry. I am an admissions counselor here at Oklahoma State and we are so happy um, to have you all join us and get to share a little bit of information about OSU with you this afternoon. So um, I've got several colleagues on this call with me. So um, I've got a couple of our campus tour guides who are current students. I've got Blake and Maddie. Do y'all wanna say hi or give a wave? All right. Hello. Hi, uh, we're so happy to have you guys with us. And Blake and Maddie are gonna share a little bit of information um, about themselves and about some of the things that they're involved with towards the end of our presentation. Um, but for now, let me go ahead and share my screen and we will get rolling with a slideshow. Okay, here we go. So hopefully you should see my screen now and see our slides. So again, welcome. Uh, we're so excited to have you all here with us today um, and just get to share a little bit about OSU. So I've also got my colleague Hillary with me today. So Hillary, you wanna introduce yourself? Yeah, hi everyone. My name is Hillary Mulligan. I'm an admissions counselor for Oklahoma State University. Um, and I work with a few of the Tulsa public schools in the Tulsa area. Um, as you can see, there's a little bit of information about me up on the slide, including my work cell phone number, which is that 918 number that's listed on the slide. Um, so please feel free, if you ever have a question, you can text that number, you can give me a call. Um, it, the, the phone is on during business hours only, but if you have a question over the weekend, again, you can send that over to me um, and I'll be really excited to get in touch with you and help you out with anything that you need. Um, also, my work email is on there as well. Awesome. So um, I've got a slide too. So again, my name is Jordan Henry and I'm actually from right here in Tulsa and I'm also a TPS grad. I graduated from Edison High School. Um, I've also got my contact info up here. So just like Hillary was saying, this phone number is a work cell phone. So anytime you all have questions, you're welcome to text me. Um, you know, anytime. Um, and I'll get back to you during work hours if it's not during work hours. Um, or of course, you're welcome to give me a call or shoot me an email. Um, my email address is on here too. So um, let's get rolling with some kind of admissions information. And I'm going to turn it back over to Hillary to take it away. Great. Thanks, Jordan. So just to provide all of you with a quick overview of Oklahoma State, maybe some of you have been to our campus before or the town of Stillwater, but maybe some of you haven't. Um, so we did wanna just start off with some general information. So Stillwater, Oklahoma is about an hour and 15 minutes or so from Tulsa, give or take, depending on where you might live in the city and traffic. Um, but we are just far enough away from the Tulsa area for you to explore a, a brand new start at a new town, at a new school for your college studies. Um, but we're also close enough to home so that if you wanna go home and see your family on the weekends or see your friends, um, it's very easy to get back to the Tulsa area. Uh, OSU was founded in 1890 as a land grant university. And being a land grant university, we are very much focused on instruction, research, and outreach, not only to our students, but also to the community at large. So that theme definitely translates throughout all of our work at OSU, as well as all of the various organizations within the town. Uh, and that just creates a really great culture that is supportive of all of our students and uh, no matter if it's OSU, like I said, or different employers and, and companies within Stillwater, uh, we're working for students. We really want to make sure you have a great experience at OSU and not only grow in your academics, but also as a person. So we have some facts up here on this slide. Um, our five-star honors curriculum is definitely something we're very, very proud of. So uh, you can explore the honors college opportunities with OSU once it comes to uh, your time to apply, and we'll talk more about that later. Um, we have our student population listed on this slide as well. So we're at just over 24,000 students. So OSU is definitely, um, it's on the larger side of schools, but it's not going to be completely overwhelming. Um, the student population is that kind of great middle ground where there's a lot of new people coming from all over the world with all different sorts of backgrounds, but you also still have kind of that small, close-knit community feel. 
Uh, we have our student to faculty ratio listed on this slide at, at 20 to one as well. So you're really gonna have that opportunity to connect with your faculty members, your professors, and get to know them more and, and get all of the assistance that you need throughout your studies. We also have 200, over 200 uh, majors and different options uh, of those majors that you can study once you're in uh, your classes at OSU. And when you're applying, that's when you would select that major. Uh, so we have tons of different options for you and, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later on as well. So a couple other things to touch on here. We have over 500 organizations and clubs on our campus. So there's plenty of things for you to get involved in. We have a full list of those organizations on our website. So if that's something that you wanna browse through just to kind of see you know, what else do we have beyond our academics, just ask us, uh, you can contact us like we said earlier, uh, text us, call us, email, um, and we can help you out with that and, and give you the link and help you sort through that and, and get a good idea of what you might get involved in uh, at OSU. Um, I'm gonna skip over a couple of these uh, just for the sake of time, but you can see uh, Greek life is a big part of our campus. Um, of course, athletics as well. And then also we have down below uh, 60 miles from the Oklahoma City area and Tulsa. So you're gonna be in Stillwater, which is that small town vibe. But again, you can get back to the city, whether you wanna go home to Tulsa or head over to Oklahoma City, it's very easy to uh, get to either location. Okay, so now we're gonna jump into uh, the academics a little bit more. So I mentioned the majors earlier that we have at OSU. We have over 200 major and minor options. So we have quite a long list of different opportunities for you. And again, they're all listed on our website. So that is a fantastic place to start for you to kind of look through the list and see what stands out to you as a major that you might like to study in college. Maybe a lot of you know already exactly what you wanna study, but I'm sure there's a lot of you who are really not quite sure yet. In fact, that's, that's very, very common. So you're not alone if you feel that way. We actually have a My Majors quiz that's on this slide here. This is a very useful tool for any student who is really not quite sure about what major they wanna study. And what you'll do is answer a series of questions talking about your favorite subjects at school, uh, what you're interested in for your career, things like that. Uh, and then it will provide you with a list of about your top 10 uh, major matches at OSU specifically. And so then you can use that list as a starting point to kind of look into the different programs, see what you like, see what you don't like. Um, and then of course, ask us questions about those programs as well. And we can, we can help you decide on that perfect major for you, for you to list on your application. Um, keep in mind though, that while you're in college, you can always change your major. Um, that's something that is also very, very common. Some students change their majors multiple times while they're, they're completing their studies. So it's important to try to select one for your application. But again, if, if you are still kind of unsure, just know that down the line while you're working on your academics and with your academic advisor, um, that's something that's flexible and can be changed. Okay, so a little bit about the application process. And obviously this is a really important step for any student who's interested in OSU. Uh, you'll need to complete an application as well as the steps below uh, that first bullet point there that we're going to talk about over the next few minutes in order to be reviewed for admission for OSU. And every university's application process is a little bit different. So it's super important to make sure you know exactly what each school that you're interested in is requiring for your application. So for anybody who is watching this video, um, and you're a junior currently uh, in spring 2021 right now is when we're, we're recording this. Um, your application will open on July 1st, 2021. So it's coming up, it'll be here before you know it. Um, mark that date on your calendar. But what you'll wanna do on that date is head over to admissions.okstate.edu and get started on your application. We have our own separate application specifically for OSU. So just make sure you head to our website to get started on that. Uh, the next thing that we'll need in order to review for admission is your official high school transcript. So chat with your counselor at school 
and ask them how you can have that sent over to us. Um, there should be some sort of process set up through your school, whether it's some sort of electronic system or something like that. So make sure you chat with your counselor um, and they'll assist you with that. Keep in mind though, that we cannot accept um, like a printed out grade report or something that you might've just received from uh, your teacher or something. It needs to be an official transcript. So next thing on this list are official ACT or SAT test scores. So uh, we've kind of uh, adopted a new style of process with our admissions review process where we are uh, working under test optional admission right now. So what that means is that you don't necessarily have to apply with a test score. Um, and we're gonna have a lot more information coming out about that over the next few months for you students that are preparing to apply. So keep an eye on our website, keep an eye on your emails, um, and there'll be more information to come on that. But we certainly recommend that students do continue to test. Um, you can take the ACT and or the SAT. So if you want to take both types and send us both scores, that's completely fine. Um, but most of our scholarships at OSU will use a test score in their review process. So that's why it would be important for students to continue to take that test um, if you can do that. The next thing on the list here is the $40 application fee, which would be paid once you finish your online application in order to completely submit that application. Um, we also have some fee waiver options too. So if you qualify for free or reduced lunch at school, or if you have a fee waiver provided by ACT or SAT, um, then we can waive your application fee so you can apply for free. Uh, all you'll need to do is chat with your counselor at school again and ask them to send us an email that indicates that you qualify for one of those uh, options that I mentioned, and then we'll be able to waive that fee. So again, if you have questions about that, just feel free to chat with one of us and, and we can help you through that process. Okay, so all of those items that I mentioned, except for the test scores, because we are doing that test optional process right now, um, those are all mandatory in order for us to start your review process. Now, the last two items, the essays and the leadership and involvement resume, those are going to be labeled as optional. Um, however, all students should definitely plan on completing both of these items because they are used for scholarship review. So the essays, you would have to do two out of four options that we provide for you. So you can kind of pick your favorite question, your favorite two questions that we have posted on our, our application. Um, and then the leadership and involvement resume will be a form that you'll fill out and list any involvement you've had in or outside of school throughout your, throughout your uh, high school years, or even before that, if you have something um, that you'd like to include on there for middle school or something. Um, but again, these two items make up the scholarship portion of your application. So it's definitely very important to make sure you complete everything that you see on this screen in order to have the most op op optimal, excuse me, uh, application process with OSU. All right, so moving right along to uh, a little screenshot here of our application status page. Um, and I think Jordan, maybe I couldn't remember if this was your slide or not, but I'll just take care of it real quick. So the application page will look something like this. So whenever you're getting ready to start your application, uh, you'll see that option on the left where it says start my application. And that's where you can head to that. And you'll click on that, you'll create a login and then you'll be ready to go. Um, now, if you're already done with your application and you just wanna log in and take a look and see how things are going or you know, complete your next steps, then you would go to the right and then you see log into the application portal and uh, you would again use your same login and then you would get to your um, checklist page which we have a little picture of a little bit later on so hopefully this can be helpful to, for you as you're getting ready for that application process all right um so next once we have all of your application materials uh we'll start reviewing your application. And typically that will take anywhere from about one to two weeks for us to provide you with an admissions decision. So we have two different review styles at OSU. On the left is assured admission. So this is pretty straightforward. We have three different categories listed here. Uh, 
as you can see, the first one, 3.0 GPA or better, uh, and ranking within the top third of your class. Or if you have a 3.0 GPA in your 15 unit core classes, which is math, history, English, science, um, and then a 21 on the ACT or a 1060 SAT or higher. Or if you have a 24 on the ACT or 1160 SAT score or better, then you will be automatically admitted to OSU just based off of that pretty um, clear cut criteria. So you might be sitting there right now, maybe you've taken a test score, you know your GPA or your class rank, and then you can be pretty confident that you're gonna be admitted. Now, if you don't fall into one of these categories, or if you weren't able to take a test, or you know, you're not interested in, in testing, um, don't worry because we have the process on the right and we admit a lot of students through this process as well. This is the test optional admission and comprehensive review process. This is whenever we look beyond just your GPA and test score and we get to know a lot more about you. So it's a more holistic approach to the application review. We'll read your essays, we'll look at your leadership and involvement. Of course, we'll look at your GPA and your test scores if you have them. Um, but we'll make a decision that we feel is best for each student based on everything that we see. Um, so if you have any questions about which category you might fall under, you can always talk with us and we can, you know, really talk about what your grades look like and your test scores and help you have an idea of what to expect um, throughout this entire process. All right, and now I'm going to hand it over to Jordan and uh, she's going to continue with the next slide. Okay, hi everyone. Um, I'm back. So we're going to switch gears a little bit and shift over to some scholarship and financial aid talk because usually um, the next question that immediately follows, okay, I've been admitted. Awesome. Now how can I get scholarships um, is generally how that conversation goes. So um, we sort of categorize our scholarships at OSU into three main categories. So those three are broken down on this slide. So First category of these scholarships um, are called University Assured Scholarships. So um, these scholarships are based entirely off of your test scores. So that would be either your ACT or your SAT test and your high school GPA. So these scholarships are going to be based off of um, sort of a combination of both of those two things. And if you meet the requirements for one of these assured scholarships, you will receive that scholarship no matter what. So um, these are pretty cool and there is a sort of sliding scale of scholarships for, um, or excuse me, a sliding scale of your GPA and your test score um, that's required for the different levels of these scholarships, um, which is listed on our website. But um, again, if you meet the requirements for one of our assured scholarships, you will receive that scholarship. So um, the middle column, um, partnered scholarships, these are going to be scholarships that um, are awarded by OSU, but they're managed sort of outside of OSU. So a couple of really great examples of partnered scholarships are Oklahoma's Promise and the National Merit Scholarship. So we're actually going to talk a little bit more um, about Oklahoma's Promise here in a minute, but um, that is a partnered scholarship from OSU. So that's what those partnered scholarships are. Um, and then the last column up here, University competitive. These are pretty much exactly what they sound like. So these are scholarships where you will be in competition with other incoming freshmen to receive these scholarships. So these are going to be based off of kind of a combination of everything that you submit to us on your application. So the good news about that is that these are based entirely on your application information. So there's not anything additional that you need to do, anything additional that you need to submit in order to be considered for scholarships from OSU outside of just submitting all of those application materials. So um, when scholarship committees are reviewing students for these competitive awards, they will be able to look at your high school transcript, your test score again, so that would be your GPA, or excuse me, that would be your ACT or your SAT. Um, and then they'll also read over those essay questions and that leadership and involvement section of your application. So those two sections are really, really important when it comes to scholarships. So I would definitely encourage you all to go ahead and get those sections submitted whenever you're first filling out your application. That way you've got them in, you're looking good as far as scholarships go, and then you don't have to worry about doing those later on. So most of these competitive scholarships um, are going to be awarded by academic departments. 
So that means that they'll be kind of based on the major that you list on your application. So as an example, if you're listed, or excuse me, if you're interested in a business major, maybe something like finance or entrepreneurship, if you list that as your major on your application, you will automatically be considered for all of the scholarship dollars that the business department has for incoming students at OSU. Now, that said, if you're not quite sure what you want to major in yet, don't feel like you have to list a major on your application. You can list undeclared, and you will still be considered for um, some scholarships that we have set aside for undecided students. So don't feel like you have to list a major, but if you do, that will definitely affect the scholarships that you can be considered for. But um, again, just to reiterate, all of these competitive scholarships are just based off your OSU application materials. So there's not anything additional that you need to do to be considered for these scholarships other than get all of those application materials submitted to us. So a little bit more about Oklahoma's Promise. So at OSU, any of our students who um, are receiving Oklahoma's Promise, um, Oklahoma's Promise will cover your tuition but you'll still have some other college expenses that you'll need to cover as well. So we have an additional scholarship that's called Cowboy Covenant. And this is an additional $1,000 that you will receive as an Oklahoma's Promise student every single year of school, regardless of any other funding that you receive. So if you have Oklahoma's Promise, you can count on receiving this $1,000 Cowboy Covenant Scholarship all four years of school and no other funds that you might receive, um, other scholarships, you know, other grants, things like that, they will never affect this amount. So you can count on having this $1,000 every year for those four years. Um, Again, additional scholarships can also be stacked with these awards, so this award amount won't be um, affected by it, but you can add additional scholarships, um, grants, all of those things, along with Oklahoma's Promise and Cowboy Covenant, um, so that we can kind of add several forms of financial aid together to help you with any sort of college costs. So of course, anytime you have questions about these things, definitely reach out to us. We're happy to help. Um, we're happy to you know, explain and put it in simple terms to make sure that everyone um, kind of understands because we know that these things can be kind of confusing sometimes. So if you've got questions about this, please reach out to us. Um, and then the last bullet point on here, this is really important. If you have Oklahoma's Promise, you must file a FAFSA every year of school in order to receive those Oklahoma's Promise dollars. So that's really, really important. Make sure to submit a FAFSA um, if you qualify for Oklahoma's Promise so that you can receive it. So on the subject of FAFSA, let's talk a little bit more about that. So FAFSA stands for Free Application for Federal Student Aid. So filling out a FAFSA is really how you can qualify for things like grants, loans, um, sometimes some scholarships through the Department of Education and through the state of Oklahoma. So filling out a FAFSA is a really great way um, to kind of expand your net as you're looking for college money. Um, it's not mandatory at OSU, but it is highly, highly encouraged. The only exception to that, again, is if you qualify for Oklahoma's Promise, you must fill out a FAFSA each year of school in order to keep getting those Oklahoma's Promise dollars. So the FAFSA opens every year on October 1st for the next school year. So that means for you all, um, if you're watching this right now in the spring of 2021 and you're a high school junior, you're getting ready to roll into your senior year this fall, you can start your FAFSA for your freshman year of college on October 1st this fall. So the earlier you fill out a FAFSA, the better. We definitely encourage you to get those in early because there are some grants that can run out over time. So um, filling out a FAFSA early and as close to October 1st as possible is definitely something that we encourage. Um, and the website to fill this out is fafsa.gov. So really simple. That's where you can go to fill out a FAFSA. Um, or if you want to save it and come back to it, you can do that as well. But again, this will open this fall on October 1st um, for the fall 2022 class. So 
really important. Um, definitely something to get started on as soon as you can this October. Um, you will need your sort of household tax information. So you'll want to grab um, your parent or legal guardian and have them help you with filling that out, but shouldn't take you really any longer than an hour to get it knocked out. So um, just go ahead and put it on your calendar now to plan to get that done this October. And of course, if you have questions about this, feel free to reach out to us and we're more than happy to help. So um, some other important dates to keep in mind, like Hillary mentioned, our application opens every year on July 1st. So if you are a junior watching this right now, um, in the spring of 2021, our application will open this summer on July 1st. We definitely encourage students to apply early. That way you can kind of get all of that application material in before the school year starts. And in some cases you may actually be admitted before the school year starts. So you could start your senior year already admitted to college, which is really, really cool. So we definitely encourage students to apply early. Um, so make sure to, uh, you know, circle, star, highlight, whatever you need to do July 1st on your calendar so that you'll get that application in um, as soon as you can after it opens. So next important date we were just kind of chatting about is October 1st. Again, this is when the FAFSA will open for the fall 22 semester. So you can fill it out starting October 1st at fafsa.gov and make sure to include OSU school code on there as well. That's how we at OSU will receive your FAFSA information. So that'll be included on the FAFSA form online, but it's also on this slide um, kind of for easy reference if you all need it. So next important date is December 1st. This is when our enrollment deposit opens for students who have been admitted to OSU. Um, and submitting this enrollment deposit really is just letting us know that you're still interested in OSU and you want to move forward with your next step. So this is definitely something that's going to be more important for seniors, but December 1st is when this will open. Um, and that's really when students can start kind of moving forward with those next steps. And then the last date on this slide is February 1st. This is a scholarship deadline. So to meet a scholarship deadline, all you need to do is have all of those application materials submitted to us by that date. So super simple, just have all your application components submitted by February 1st, you meet that scholarship deadline. And this is also when students can start their housing application and start signing up for an orientation and enrollment date. So this is when students can really start to sort of move forward with those next steps. And it's when college sort of starts really seeming real. And um, it's when you get to move forward with some of those exciting, um, just kind of college next steps and, and get, get ready to go and get ready to start that college school year. So um, since we would have loved to have you all on campus with us today in person, but um, that just wasn't wasn't quite feasible um, right now with everything happening in the world, we did want to bring a little bit of campus to you. So we just wanted to share um, some photos of some different areas of campus. So this particular slide has some photos of some of our academic buildings on campus. So um, in the top left, you've got a photo of our new business building. This building is very beautiful, state of the art. We're really, really excited about it. Students are loving it so far. Um, it's looks just beautiful on campus. It's close to the library and um, it's shaped like a horseshoe. So we like to keep our um, Cowboys theme throughout some of our buildings on campus as well. Um, the middle photo on that top row there is the student union. At OSC, we actually have one of the largest, if not the largest student unions in the whole country. So this is really kind of a hub of student activity. This is where our campus life desk is located. So this is kind of the um, starting point for a lot of campus organizations, which we'll talk about here in a minute. Um, there's a lot of different places to eat in the student union. We've got a bookstore in the student union. There's a bank. There's all kinds of things in there. Um, as well as several offices, including our admissions office. So if you all are ever on campus and you'd like to come see us over in admissions, our office is in the student union. Um, the photo on the top row on the right is going to be our Endeavor Lab. And this is a brand new state-of-the-art engineering lab. And this is something that we're really, really proud of. Um, very, very cool. We're so excited about it. Students are loving it so far. This is a state-of-the-art lab building for undergraduate engineering students. And this is dedicated specifically to college students in engineering at OSU. So this is not a building that's mostly dominated by grad students. This is gonna be 
college students, freshmen through seniors, um, who are working on some of their engineering lab projects in there. Um, and it is very, very cool. So if you're interested in engineering, um, this is definitely um, just something really cool and unique that we have at OSU. So on the bottom row, these photos, um, on the bottom right, right below that engineering lab, we've got a photo of our brand new Performing Arts Center. So we've got a lot of new buildings on campus right now. Um, this Performing Arts Center is called the McKnight Center, and it is absolutely beautiful, as you can see right there, also state of the art. Um, I mean, really just very incredible. I wish we had a picture of the inside of it on this slide too, but um, we, went, we went with the outside because that's what a lot of people see from the street and things like that. But um, this is a new building on campus. We're really excited about it. This is where all of our um, campus performances take place now. And this is also the new home of our music school. So if any of you are interested in music, it is likely that you will spend quite a bit of time in our McKnight Center and the Greenwood School of Music at OSU. A um, couple more pictures on here to mention. On the bottom row in the middle, that is a photo of Old Central, which is the home of our Honors College. And it's also the oldest building on campus at OSU. So this was one of the first classroom buildings that was built on OSU's campus after, after we opened in 1890. It's not the very first one, but it's one of the first ones. And this is the oldest building that's still left on campus. So we thought that was a great place to house our Honors College because this building is so historic. Um, it's right next to the Student Union on a beautiful lawn across from our McKnight Center. So if you're interested in honors, it's likely that you'll be spending some time in Old Central. And then the last photo on this slide on the bottom row on the left, this is a rendering of what our new agriculture building will look like. So we're in the process of building this right now, um, but this will be the new home for our Ferguson College of Agriculture. So if you're interested um, in agriculture, natural resources, ecology, environmental science, things like that, um, it is is likely that you will spend quite a bit of time in this brand new agriculture building when you all get to campus. So wanted to share what that would look like as well. Moving on. So this slide, of course, has some photos of some of our athletic facilities. So of course, we've got Boone Pickens Stadium, the home of our football team, one of my favorite places in the world, definitely my favorite place to spend a Saturday. Um, we've also got a photo of Gallagher Iba Arena, our historic basketball arena. Um, love spending time in there as well. Um, and then towards the bottom, we've got some photos, some of our other athletic facilities. So um, on the bottom in the middle is a photo of Oak Rate Stadium, which is our new baseball stadium. So we're finally getting to break that in um, this year. It was finished last year, but um, of course things got really crazy in the world around this time during baseball season last year. So we're really excited that we're getting to um, kind of break in that new baseball stadium. And then we've also got um, soccer slash track down on the bottom right and a picture of our softball team on the bottom left who um, is very great and they're doing wonderful right now. So wanted to share some of those athletics facilities as well if any of you are interested in sports or your sports fans. So um, this slide just has some pictures of our homecoming. So if you are not familiar with OSU's homecoming celebration, we go all out. And in fact, OSU is home to America's greatest homecoming celebration. And this fall, in fall 2021, we are gonna be celebrating our 100th homecoming. So this is our centennial homecoming. We're so excited about it. Um, we absolutely, pull out all the stops. It is a huge week-long celebration, um, of course, that culminates with our homecoming football game on Saturday. But homecoming is so much fun. It's one of my favorite parts of the year at OSU. Being a part of homecoming was one of my favorite things that I was a part of as a student at OSU a few years ago. Um, and now I love coming back as an OSU alum, as well as an OSU staff member, um, to get to celebrate homecoming. So um, a few different kind of options for getting involved on campus. We just wanted to kind of quickly share this because getting involved in something outside the classroom is a really great way to start making a large campus like OSU feel a little bit smaller and start to feel a little bit more like home. So getting involved in something is definitely, um, definitely, definitely something that I recommend to all students their very first semester on campus, um, just so that they can start sort of making some connections outside of the classroom. So you've got a lot of different options to choose from. Um, of course, we've got over 500 student organizations on campus, and these are going to be academic-based, interest-based, sports-based, all kind of different um, organizations to choose from. 
excuse me, um, there is a list of all of these campus organizations on our website called Campus Link. So if you Google OK State Campus Link, you can find that website that has all of these organizations listed out. And there is truly something for every interest under the sun. So if you're involved in something in high school right now, if you're wanting to continue that in college, you can do that plus some at OSU. Another great way to get involved and to help contribute to the cost of college is to work on campus. So um, we definitely encourage students to think about working on campus or even off campus um, because it's a really great way to sort of get connected both with, both with OSU and with the city of Stillwater. Um, and then you can also, of course, earn money that you can then use to help pay for your school. So you've got a lot of different job opportunities. Almost every office on our campus hires student workers in Stillwater as a college town, also um, hires a lot of students to work at different businesses around town over the year. So you've got a lot of options for employment as well. Um, and then Greek life is also an option for you. So this would be referring to sororities and fraternities. These are social organizations um, that sort of start with college students. So um, there's a lot of different organizations across several different Greek councils that you can choose from. Um, and our Greek Life website is gogreek.okstate.edu if you'd like to look into Greek Life a little bit more. So um, quickly, just to end with, we did want to let you all know that um, we would love to see you on campus. We would love to have you on campus for a tour. Um, we have a lot of different options for tours. Um, they're all listed on this slide, of course, but we offer a walking tour of campus every weekday at 9.30 a.m. On Fridays, we have an additional tour in the afternoons at 1.30, and we usually also host a campus tour about one Saturday per month. So we have a lot of different options to choose from for campus tours. Um, in addition to getting to see our lovely campus, you also have the option to meet with a representative from your sort of academic interest area. So if you're really, really interested in OSU engineering and you want to learn some more about it, you can do that while you're on campus for a tour. You can meet with someone from our engineering college. Um, and the same goes for every academic area across campus, including our honors college. Um, and then if you are wanting to experience our campus, but you're maybe not quite ready to go on an in-person tour quite yet, we do have some virtual campus tours available on Tuesdays right now as well. So you can sign up for any of these on our website, which is admissions.okstate.edu. So wanted to end quickly with our office contact information. So we've got our address um, and then our office phone number and email address listed on this slide. So this is a great slide to um, you know, screenshot or take a picture of so that you've got easy reference for um, that contact information. But that is going to end the presentation part of our portion. So I'm going to go ahead and unshare my screen so that you can see our lovely faces again. There we go. Um, and now we're going to do a little question and answer. And actually, I believe we're going to hear a little bit more from our tour guides so they can tell you guys a little bit more about what they've been involved with as students at OSU. Hillary, you want to take it away? Yeah, definitely. So um, I'll just let you both introduce yourselves. Blake, you can start. And then if you don't mind mentioning um, your major and also any clubs that you've been involved in like this year or even like previous years um, and tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, uh, my name is Blake Broadhurst. I'm a senior here at Oklahoma State. Uh, I'm studying sports media and I'm also from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, I went to Union High School. Um, clubs I was involved in, I was involved in Greek life. Um, that was a big part of my life. So I did things like junior Greek life as well, which is a campus wide, um, it kind of brings Greek life together. Um, and just, I was involved in the sports media club as well as the Daily O, which is a television program that Oklahoma State puts on and that's run by students um, every week. Um, and I also do a radio show here in Oklahoma State as well. And so just a couple of things just involving sports um, and Greek life. Awesome. And my name is Maddie Owens. I'm actually originally from a small town up in Northern California. I am a junior this year and I'm a double major in agribusiness and ag communications. So I'm over in the Ferguson College of Agriculture. Uh, and some things I've been involved with on campus and continue this year would be um, our collegiate cattle women on campus, uh, as well as our block and bridal chapter and ag communicators of tomorrow. Wonderful, thank you both. So um, we do have a couple questions that we were hoping to talk with you about today. So if you both don't mind just telling us a little bit about 
how you learned about OSU way back when you were in high school and um, you know, what sparked your interest to apply? My story is actually kind of funny when it comes to Oklahoma State. Um, just being from Tulsa, I viewed Oklahoma State as somewhere that was too close. I kind of wanted to get away from home. So I really wasn't very interested in Oklahoma State. Um, and it was about right this right around this time, actually, my senior year. It was like late March, early April. And my dad's like, hey, we should tour Oklahoma State. And I was like, I don't really want to. And he's like, well, you'll miss school on Friday. And I was like, all right, I'll do it. So I actually toured Oklahoma State to miss school. Um, and I came on the tour and it completely changed my mind. Um, everything about the tour, um, the way my tour guide just like talked to us and the way he talked about Oklahoma State was different than any tour I had been on um, and just kind of witnessing how students interact with each other and specifically with my tour guide I was like man I feel like everybody here like kind of knows each other and um, then I was able to spend some time um, with some professors here on campus um, and just like the way that they talked to me um, I felt like I had a place to Oklahoma State I felt like it was a place that they wanted me to be there and I was somebody and not just a number to add to their list I was like okay this is kind of different and also on my tour, my tour guide told me about the sports media program. Um, I wanted to be an engineer before that. So I changed where I wanted to go to school. I changed what I wanted to major in that day. I hadn't even applied to Oklahoma State. Uh, so I went home and I applied that night. Uh, definitely don't do that. Uh, apply as soon as you can, even if you're even slightly thinking about it, because I missed out on some scholarships because of that. Um, but yeah, it completely changed my mind. And so ever since here, I have not regretted it at all. There's no one I've ever met who hasn't loved their experience in Oklahoma State. Um, and I'm definitely joining the ranks as them. I have a, a similar story in the terms that uh, the tour was what really won me over. Um, but back in high school from FFA conventions and different things like that, um, I heard a little bit about Oklahoma State all the time. Uh, it has a phenomenal agriculture program here. Uh, so even all the way in California, we hear about it. Um, and I was in Oklahoma City showing horses and I had a free day. I said I might as well go up and visit. So I got to tour campus the Thursday of homecoming week, which was a great sell. Uh, you get to see how beautiful the campus is, see the great community um, and just absolutely fell in love. I visited that day, went home, did my application and everything, uh, got that all in and then did not return to campus until new student orientation and loved it just as much from the day I stepped back on campus as a freshman. Awesome. Okay, so next question. If you can think back to your application um, and the, just that whole time period that you guys spoke of a little bit, what would be your biggest piece of advice for students who are getting ready to go through all of those applications and, and write their essays and everything like that? I would just say spend time on it, uh, put effort into it. And I think just be yourself. I think a lot of people try to like add a bunch of stuff that doesn't really like define who they are. And I think that just being involved in what you are and just being like yourself on your application, I think is the most important thing. Um, answer everything truthfully, obviously, and just, I don't know, be confident in what you bring to the table. And I think that um, universities will notice that. Yeah, definitely. My advice would be to put time and effort into it. Um, don't put it onto the back burner, get it in so you can get as much scholarship money as you can. Uh, that's really helpful. And also don't be intimidated by those essay questions. They are not nearly as hard. Just be truthful, like Blake said, uh, and be just try and show your personality and things that you'd be interested in. Uh, fill out that resume with all of your leadership and involvement things uh, and just put some time and effort into it. And definitely include anything and everything that you've ever been involved in. Um, even definitely. If you small, definitely just include it because I'm sure it means something to somebody. All right, so uh, one thing that we didn't really talk about too much today in the presentation is housing. And um, for all the students listening in, freshmen are required to live on campus for their first year. Um, and we require that for many reasons, but ultimately in summary, to really help you have the most positive experience you can have as a freshman student, because there is a big change going from high school to college. And we wanna make sure we're helping you throughout that. But for both of you, um, when you lived on campus for that first year, um, looking back, is there anything, you know, that you can really point out that you really liked about that or that you felt kind of helped you find your way? 
So, uh, like I said, I was involved in Greek life. And so for the guys, if you're interested in doing a fraternity, um, the house fraternities will have you live in your freshman year. Uh, so I did not live like in a residential hall. Um, I lived in the fraternity house. Um, and that was the best, one of the best years of my life. Um, so definitely I recommend Greek life to anyone who's interested. Um, just the people I was surrounded with, um, just pushing me to be the best version of myself. And just like, I mean, being surrounded by successful people, um, you want to be better. And so having these guys around me, I mean, just instant friends and people I spend my time with now, um, like my best friends in my life. And so I don't know if I answered your question at all, but uh, freshman year was awesome. I think M Maddie had a different experience than me. Um, so you can talk about that. Yeah, definitely. So I lived on campus my freshman year, like uh, every other student, unless you're in a fraternity. Um, I was in a living learning program for the College of Agriculture. So uh, I got involved in that being an out of state student. It was suggested to me just to be able to plug in and meet people. Uh, so our living learning programs are going to be either surrounding uh, a major, um, a specific area in a college or just interest based. So for mine being in the College of Ag, I was living with people that were similar majors, had the same classes as me. Uh, and since so day one, we were able to kind of just connect on that level and get involved. And um, they also did a great job at making sure we understood what resources were there for us on campus, what clubs we could get involved in, um, just things like that. So my biggest thing with living on campus was just immediate friends um, and just a more uh, familiar understanding of campus. Uh, and also you're just conveniently close to everything. So it's easy to make it to class. It's easy to dine on campus. Um, and I loved getting plugged in through a living learning program. Okay, so last question before we kind of wrap things up here. Uh, do either of you have any favorite OSU tradition or uh, activity, place to eat, something like that? Uh, just being a sports media guy, I just love sports in general. Um, so I don't know if that's necessarily like a tradition, but like I have the all sports pass. It's like one of the best investments you can make every single year. Um, so like I have tickets to all three baseball games this weekend and I'm really excited, but like, that's just what I do. Like I spend my time with my friends when we go to sporting events and just like the atmosphere of, I don't know, everyone loves OSU so much here on campus. And so when you go to sporting events and everyone's just going crazy for their team and just like the support and you, everyone's on the same page, everyone like knows the players, it feels like, I don't know, it's just, that's my favorite experience is just being able to go to sporting events. And so that's been a huge blessing even through COVID that even though we have limited capacity and it's not quite as loud as normal, just being able to still be able to attend the games has been like massive for me in my last year here. Yeah, I'm definitely the same. I've had an all sports pass uh, since my freshman year. Absolutely love going uh, to all sporting events. Baseball has been super fun in the new stadium. Football, of course, is a great time here in Stillwater. Uh, but for me, I don't think I could necessarily pick my favorite transition. Uh, everything from Pistol Pete to our horse bullet um, and everything in between homecoming are great ways to get involved. Uh, for me, I was a big dog person, still am. So moving away uh, about 27 hours from my dog that I grew up with back home was sad. Uh, but once I got to campus and I got to meet our pet, pet posse dogs, uh, that was definitely awesome for me. Great piece of home. Uh, so those are our therapy dogs here on campus. So they're going to be found uh, doing events across campus during the week, uh, as well as they belong to faculty and staff. So they'll sometimes be in classes, meetings, things like that. And you can always go up and pet them when they have their little plaid vests on. So that was a great uh, thing that I got to be involved with here at, on campus. All right, wonderful. Thank you both so much for your help today and for joining us and providing us with all your feedback. It's very, it's great. Yeah, thanks for having us. Thank you, yeah. Definitely. All right, so I think this is gonna wrap up our, our presentation today. Um, we're hoping that this was helpful for all of you. And as we said before, if you ever need anything, have any questions, feel free to contact us and, and we'll be there for you. And I'll hand it over to Jordan to end things up. Yeah, just another, another thank you all so much for joining us. Thank you to Blake and Maddie for sharing a little bit about your experience at OSU as current students. We so appreciate you joining us. Uh, but that'll wrap up our presentation for today, of course. Hillary mentioned, as always, please reach out to us anytime you have questions and we are here and we are happy to help you guys, but I'll wrap it up. So thank you for joining us and y'all have a great rest of the day. <laughs>